if you go to a craft beer bar or a wine bar, you don't want to be offered a choice of one to two options. Actually, consumers these days really want choice. And you're only able to offer that choice fast if you have different grinders set up in your coffee shop. Particularly in a commercial environment, you're, you're making coffee in a system and every time you improve one part of the system, it reveals opportunities in the rest of it. Baristas, they have more knowledge and they want to have so more data, they want to have more control of the main parameters of the grinder process, but the technology should be done in an easy way. Welcome back to the Fifth Wave Podcast. I'm Jeffrey Young, Editor-in-Chief of Coffee Business Magazine, Fifth Wave. In this episode, we're examining the market for coffee grinders and their important role in making the perfect coffee. Things have changed a lot over the years. If you'd walked into an Italian coffee bar in the 1990s, you'd find a single paddle doser with a tamper built into the frame of the grinder. But today, if you walk into a high-end specialty coffee outlet, you'll see a whole array of grind-by-weight grinders and a set of functional grinders for each different purpose. While there's clearly a lot of interest in high-end grinding in the specialty sector, the majority of coffee outlets all across the globe still use relatively simple grinding equipment and often only one grinder per cafe. So there seems to be a big future ahead for high-end grinders. So with this growing divergence of the types of grinders out there in cafe outlets, we decided to examine the business case for upgrading grinding equipment. How important are grinders in achieving coffee quality? How much and where should operators be investing in their grinders? And what's the future of grinding technology? We'll speak with Dale Harris of Has Been, Lauro Fioretti at Simonelli Group, and we begin by speaking with Lena Frick, Head of Group Marketing at Hemro a German manufacturer producing a number of major coffee grinding brands such as Amphen, Malkönig, Ditting and Hey Cafe. They sell in over 100 countries and are most known for the Malkönig EK43. Lena, thanks for joining us here today on Fifth Wave. Yeah, thank you for having me. I'm very excited. So I wonder if you give us a little bit of background on yourself. Yeah, I'm happy to. So uh, my name is Lena Frick. I'm the head of group marketing at Hembro. I joined pretty recently, only this year, but my, I would say, taste journey has been going on since more than a decade. So uh, I worked in spirits and champagne before. So I'm an educated and certified scotch taster, now also a SCA certified barista. Um, and I generally really care about building brands, bringing brands to life, and also bringing better taste to consumers. Because what we see all across food and beverages, but specifically also coffee now, is that consumers and also mainstream consumers care about quality in their coffee. Well said. Well said. Um, how would you describe the process of, of grinding? It's breaking down a bean, increasing the surface area of each bean. And surface area is important because Water can only extract fantastic taste if there is enough surface area. So if you talk about grinding, I mean, looking at one coffee bean, for example, we would look at a French press, which requires the coarsest grinding setting. You would break one bean down in 100 to 300 particles, roughly. Then, if you would look at an espresso, it's 3,500 particles one coffee bean breaking down in, in so many particles. And if you look at Turkish fine, so mocha, it's up to 35,000 particles. So really an incredible amount of really small particles. Why is grinding so important? Yeah, great that you asked that question because I think that's really a really important one. And we see that grinding is often not understood yet depending on whom we're talking in the industry. So generally, you could say that Grinding is definitely one of the most important determinants of quality in the cup. But if you look at kind of the coffee making process, the months and sometimes years it takes to obviously grow coffee, store coffee, roast coffee, and then obviously ship coffee as well, you can very quickly ruin months or even years of work with grinding wrong. Because if you then grind not non consistently, you have very differently distributed particles, which lead to a sour, bitter, unbalanced taste. 
So wh- why do you think it's not as understood by businesses and by coffee makers, perhaps even in their homes? Yeah, I think in the past, there was a lot of focus on the espresso and on the coffee machines, which are obviously also very important in the process. But the focus and the talk has always been about that. And specifically for consumers, we see that at some point also obviously it comes down to an investment. Home baristas or prosumers, as we call them, are willing to take. And often the first thinking is about the price of the coffee machine. And then the grinder comes for the average consumer, maybe a bit of an, as an afterthought. So what we see, we just carried out research in two key home markets for us, the US and Germany. And we see that 80% of very coffee enthusiastic end consumers spend only between 50 and 200 euro or dollar on a grinder. So we would consider that as a very entry level product in grinding, so not a high quality product. And we see that these consumers would tend to buy a maybe cheaper grinder and then maybe they're not happy with it after a while and then upgrade. But this initial investment would often be on a, on a cheaper entry product. Now, let's move to the cafe environment. And it's often not simply one grinder that you need in a coffee shop. Exactly. So actually what we see also, there's a massive trend for cafes to have more than one grinder. While in the past, um, yeah, it's already a few years ago, coffees would have one grinder. They now keep on adding espresso grinders. So what we see in a lot of our flagship coffee shops throughout Europe is now that they have ideally one filter grinder. So for example, an EK43. And then they would have up to three, four espresso grinders. And actually specialty coffee shops keep on adding espresso grinders on top to offer that variety to consumers. Because again, to refer back to my previous industry, if you go to a craft beer bar or a wine bar, you don't want to be offered a choice of one to two options. Actually, consumers these days really want choice. And you're only able to offer that choice fast if you have different grinders set up in your coffee shop. What sort of rate do you think this market is growing at in terms of volume or value? So we don't really publish exact figures here. What we do see it that is that it's growing really double digit in some markets, specifically when it comes to a home market. What we also see, I mean, we deliver our products and we target our products onto so many different countries. So it's very different if you look at very influential coffee countries like Australia, the UK, obviously, and the US, where we would say we have quite a sophisticated market, which is still growing because there's many mainstream coffee chains who don't grind fresh yet, also in those markets. Then if you look at, for example, developing countries where coffee shops and specialty coffee only starts, you would see maybe an even higher growth. So it's really difficult to to say that on a global level, actually. And hotspots in Asia? Hotspots in Asia, yes. So for us, South Korea is a super important market, very interesting market. And obviously countries like Vietnam, a very interesting coffee culture as well. Yeah, I would say these two are definitely much on our view at the moment. And then China, for sure, because it's just such a huge market, very relevant, very interesting when it comes to specialty now as well. So when something yeah. opens up in China, um, I just spoke the other day to a business partner of us, a specialty coffee shop chain who had 30, 40 stores last year and is now opening 150 more within one year's time. So it's just a scale which we often cannot imagine in Europe. Amazing. Lena, thanks for joining us here today. Thank you so much for having me. Speaking with Lena, it's certain that quality oriented cafes must use multiple grinders to serve a variety of coffees quickly and made to a high standard. And it's interesting to learn that there seems to be a big opportunity to educate consumers on the importance of coffee grinding. Now let's get a deeper insight into how a skilled operator needs to manage their grinders by speaking with former World Brister champion Dale Harris. Dale is now the global new product and business development director at Has Been and Ozone Coffee Roasters. Welcome to Fifth Wave, Dale. Thank you, man. Uh, It's a real pleasure to be here. As a World Brister champion, how important is the grinding process to making a good cup of coffee? It is one essential. We'll be waiting a long time if we can't grind the coffee to get the results we want. But more at the heart of it, your grinder and the the adjustments you make on the grinder are 
your real controls over the flavor of coffee that you've roasted and sourced. Your espresso machine has lots of, depending on the model, you might be able to adjust brewing temperature or water volume or pressure, all of these things, but they're real macro adjustments. Whereas with your grinder, you're really impacting contact time. Contact time really impacts which flavors we pull from the coffee. So it's that kind of fine tuning that you do all the way through the day or in a competition seconds before your judges experience the coffee that really define your version of that coffee. So if we just step back into the real basics of coffee grinding, there are different types of grinders. Yes, you can maybe even go back a step even before grinders, you know, at, at its very heart. You're crushing coffee beans to increase surface area. And you can do that with a uh, mortar and pestle. That's basically how coffee is brewed in the traditional Ethiopian coffee ceremony. Really simple. You crush the coffee. There's more surface area, so there's more access for water to pull flavor from the coffee. But the problem with that is there's very little control. There's very little consistency. And you see the same with a blade grinder. So any of those grinders that have kind of one single cutting thing that spins around, like in a food processor, it's really difficult to get small pieces of coffee that are even, and even pieces of coffee help you control the flavors you're pulling out. If it's all different sizes of particles, you'll find that you'll be drawing too much flavor from some and not enough from others. So... Normally, we use things called burr grinders in commercial settings. So you have two effectively grinding stones that rub against each other. There's a small gap between them, and that determines the largest particles you're going to get from the grinder. Practically, in a cafe setting, one type of grinder fits most types or not? So it depends a little on the coffee making situation. So if we're looking at high volume cafes and cafe bars, you'll find that most of them will benefit from having a strong high volume on demand espresso grinder. And depending on how many coffees they choose to offer, they may have one or two of those, maybe if they have a blend for milk or a blend for black, that dedicated grinder that just works with that coffee through the day and that is very consistent and is very fast. So that's kind of your, your number one grinder in most situations. Some stores may, may offer lots of blends, and particularly, you know, we, we talk about the market in Australia where they may have huge espresso volume and lots of different blends or choices that are going through the espresso machine. They may have even more of these kind of dedicated grinders. In most commercial situations, though, you'll probably have one or two espresso grinders and then another grinder for your, your filter, options, but depending on your choice there, that could also be the grinder for your decaf and potentially your guest or your single origin espresso. Training. How do you go about training to make sure that people understand how to use a grinder? So again, that depends a little bit on the goal for the training and the kind of the focus of the business at that time. So if you really just want to get somebody fast-tracked into making good coffee behind a bar, and we do this a lot with our kind of foundational training sessions for our wholesale customers, is we'll keep it really simple and we'll avoid discussions of particle distribution and what makes one grinder right or wrong. And instead, we'll focus on flavor. We'll focus on oh yeah, your extraction time, how long it takes for the water to move through your coffee, particularly on the espresso machine, but also in, in other methods. That determines which flavors you pull from the coffee and your control over that extraction time is in how fine or coarse your grind is. And so every espresso grinder will have an adjustment mechanism that pushes and pulls those two grinding burrs together and apart and controls that gap at the end. And so effectively your foundational training for most baristas will be if you want to slow down the coffee, if you want to drag more flavor out of the beans, you're going to grind finer and you're going to turn this adjustment this way. And if you want to ease back in the flavor from the coffee, you'll, you'll grind coarser. So that's at the simplest level. Normally, when we start training people in the dynamics of extraction and filter brewing and TDS and all these things, then we need to go a, a layer deeper into what you can separate the problems that grinders create, right? They they impact that brewing time, but they also impact the surface area that's released. So you're not just increasing the speed of water moving through a bed of coffee, 
but also how effective that water is pulling flavor from a coffee. And really quickly, it can become this, this, this complex web of all these different interactions that happen because you make this one change on the grinder. <laughs> Talk about how technological advances in grinding equipment have impacted how we make coffee today. And as we see technology increasing over the last 10, 15 years, the average espresso machine in a cafe has got so much more capable. You can change so many more things. But often what we find is as those machines get more consistent and more capable, it reveals maybe things we were doing wrong with our grinding and our dose preparation beforehand. You know, the, the way we use grinders 10, 15 years ago, if you move to a modern espresso machine and use the most up-to-date kind of methods and ways of making coffee, you'll find you can't use those kind of, those old training tips we used to use in terms of dosing to the way the basket is full, not measuring things in certain ways. So you've seen this real progression that as espresso machines get better, you notice the faults in grinders and then grinders begin to rush to catch up. Mm. As grinders get better, we begin to notice the flaws in either our espresso machines or even the way we're roasting coffee. And so it's mm. one of those things that, particularly in a commercial environment, you're, you're making coffee in a system and every time you improve one part of the system, it reveals opportunities in the rest of it. Mm. This is problematic because everyone wants to buy the newest toy in each thing and doesn't realize the knock-on impact, but it's also maybe demonstrates how many opportunities there are for us to grow and get better in the future. So, for example, what might we have been doing 15 years ago that now will be considered totally wrong? One example of this is for a long time, espresso machines were designed to be super consistent in temperature, super consistent in pressure, but they were all based around the idea that everyone used a, a version of a standard espresso grinder that produced a certain range of grind sizes at each point. When we started using different styles of grinders that had a smaller particle distribution, so in some ways we're both more consistent, but consistent in a much narrow, narrower window. So you were able to extract with more of a clinical approach to your coffee. You know, I'm just going to pull these flavors at the expense of these flavors. We found that was possible with filter brewing, but when we started doing it on our standard espresso machine setups, you really struggled to get as much depth of flavor as you expected. And one of the learnings that took a few years to happen was actually adjusting the point where your espresso machine's pump pressure was set began to allow you to drag more flavor from this new grind size because you weren't trying to force things past the handicaps of the previous grinding system. Mm -hmm. And it's not necessarily that the one is right and one is wrong, but it is true that as you change the way you grind coffee and the equipment you're using, you also need to change your approach on the espresso machine. And maybe there are pros and cons to this thinking for different situations. So if you're looking at low volume, let's say single origin experiential coffee, this level of control is really valuable. It might take a little longer to produce coffee like this, but certainly in barista competition, somewhere like that, or for a, a unique guest experience on a Sunday, that's really useful. But because all these things slow down how we make coffee, they're also not the desired result for a fast-paced, high-volume espresso bar on a Monday morning. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you know? yeah. Now, some time ago, we had an episode, uh, Barista versus Machine. Do you think technology will enable the grinding process to be fully automated without any need for human interaction? Eventually, it will, I think. There's definitely technology that exists that does this and allows this. There are always compromises. There are always, like, levels of tolerance in terms of producing really high level good coffee, grinders already do almost all of the work in an automated way. It just requires someone to double check and make sure that, that let's say that step is being carried out effectively and fully automated machines. All of this happens within the box of the machine, right? So you don't see the separate grinder, even though there's a separate grinder motor and there are separate burrs, separate scales, all, all of that exists within the machine. And even in traditional setups, some of the most successful bars that I've been in over the past two years in the US and the UK, actually they have all of this automation and the last job of the barista 
is to move this one piece of coffee through each piece of equipment and maybe double check each step on a set of scales or checking the time that it takes to brew. And the moving from one place to another, that's a hard job to replace. But checking in on those, those settings and the repeatability and the consistency, we're seeing that happen not just in fully automatic machines, but in telemetry being added to espresso machines. And computers are better at this kind of work, right? They'll print off a graph at the end of the month showing how many shots in your 500 stores were out of recipe. You know, which stores grinder bears are wearing faster. So we can see it happening. Whether or not it's desirable is a harder thing because as a barista and as a customer, I really value the human interaction that comes when someone's making coffee and the fact that somebody has taken that, that extra care and attention beyond what you'll experience in a fast food restaurant or something like that. So it's a difficult thing. The technology is there. It will happen one day. It's more how the market will receive it. <laughs> Thanks very much. That's amazing. Thanks for joining us here today on Fifth Wave. No problem at all. I really admire Dale's thoughts on how baristas will need to adapt their roles to become a quality control manager first and foremost as coffee equipment becomes more automated. Scaled operators should thus be asking themselves, do we have a program to train staff to taste and perfect our coffee flavours at scale as our equipment becomes increasingly automated? Speaking of technology, let's get a glimpse into the future of grinding innovation by speaking with Lauro Fioretti, Chief Engineer at Simonelli Group. Simonelli Group owns the Victoria Arduino and Nuovo Simonelli espresso machine and grinder brands and are very well known for their mythos grind-by-weight professional coffee grinders. Welcome, Lauro. Thank you. Welcome to you, guys. What do you think are going to be the trends going forwards in grinders? What's the future for grinders in coffee? There are a lot of um, study at the moment on the grinders. And I believe that in the last 10 years, um, there has been a lot of evolution on the coffee machines. Because 10 years ago, I remember David Schomer was talking, was dreaming eh, to have a coffee machine that has, a, for espresso, one centigrade temperature stability. And now you can find in the market a lot of machine, uh, multi-boiler machine that has a much higher uh, precision than that. So there has been really a lot of push and a lot of development on coffee machines. Grinders, uh, they start a little bit later than coffee machine, but definitely now there is a lot of research. There are a lot of study in terms of type of blades, uh, type of material, type of grinding and different kind of profiles. Uh, there is also, you know, not only in terms of uh, percentage distribution of the angulometry curves, but also there are uh, new studies about morphology. So the shape of the particles that we are uh, using uh, uh, that we are able to produce uh, with, um, with the grinders. There is uh, also a lot of, uh, there are a lot of studies in, to see how coffee are very different. We know we have a lot of different, we have a lot of different varieties available in the market. And then we have a lot of different processing and we have a lot of different roasting profiles. So coffee, it is, uh, has been light uh, roasted and uh, grind a coffee that is uh, dark roasted is completely different because the uh, hardness, the density and the hardness of the beans, the density of the beans, the volume of the beans, the component, the compounds in inside the beans are totally different. So the way the grinder is reacting is different. So the grinders have to adapt to a lot of different style of um, coffee. So there are a lot of study you know, that are um, searching to find you know best solution to have best performance in all these different situations. Then there are a lot of also uh, research in terms of user experience. So makes the user experience of the grinder as much as possible easy for the barista. So giving, you know, the best information to the barista, giving more information to the barista, like, for example, the distance of the blades that they can have a more accurate control. Having the possibility now to have the grind by weight is a new technology that is available on the market since the last few years and give the possibility to have a better control of the grinder. So the baristas, they have more knowledge and they want to have so more data, they want to have 
have more control of the main parameters of the grinder process, but the technology should be done in an easy way, in something that should be easy to use for the customer, should be easy, understandable. Then uh, there is also another part of technology in development uh, that is the connectivity. So uh, now there is also a study to have uh, the grinder uh, full connected uh, through Wi-Fi and Bluetooth technology. And this will give us the possibility to control, record, and of course uh, then study a lot of different parameters of the grinders, but not only uh, about the performance of the grinders, but also about the way the baristas are using using the grinders and uh, this uh, big data, the, all this data will give back information that uh, can uh, give, uh, you know, a better use of the grinder. I wonder if you could just, we just go back one little step. You talked about grind by weight. What, what are the benefits of grind by weight? There are a lot of benefits in the grind by weight because, uh, you know, when you grind by weight, uh, we control uh, the final weight uh, of the product. Uh, instead, uh, the standard grinder of demand, uh, they go by second. So <clears throat> when you go by second, you predict, uh, you estimate that you will get uh, this quantity of product. But of course, there are a lot of variables in the middle that can uh, modify this uh, prediction because maybe, you know, the beans are not always the same. Maybe when we know coffee is a natural product. There are a lot of variables like the nature of the beans, the density of the beans, uh, the situation of the blades, because the blades again worn out, uh, and so they don't have the same performance. Like they are new, no? When they are used, they need more second to grind the same quantity of coffee. Also, the temperature affect the performance of the grinder. When the grinder, the motor is cold, of course, it has more friction than when the grinder is hot. There is a dilatation with the, the metals. Every time you just the grinder because of, uh, for example, you have a uh, humidity condition changing or temperature environment condition are changing. Every time you adjust the grinder, you adjust the grinding sides, uh, automatically you affect the amount of coffee uh, that you will get. And uh, of course, uh, the timer doesn't know anything about all these variables that will affect the final amount of coffee. So the only way you can be precise uh, when uh, you use a grinder to have uh, exactly the same quantity is the grinder by by weight. So this is definitely is the final technology if you want to have better consistency. What about the uh, energy use of grinders? Has that improved as you've got the technology more refined? Is the average grinder using less electricity today than it might have been using five years ago? Very good question. Very good question. Uh, of course, uh, energy consumption is a big matter in the world, actually. But we have to consider that the coffee machine is using much, much more energy than a coffee grinder. What do you use in a grinder? is uh, an electrical motor. And the electrical motor, by definition, are very efficient system. Of course, the electrical motors are improving their efficiency in the latest year. But if you buy a simple commercial motor, electrical motor, you don't need to buy, you know, a high, high poly or high efficiency motor. Even a commercial electrical motor has an efficiency of uh, over 90%. So it means then from the energy that is, uh, uh, is used to grind the cost, it's over 90%. So the margin that you have in a grinder, it's limited, much more limited of what you have in a coffee machine in which there are a lot of dissipation. Really interesting. So I've just got one final question to finish off. Do you find out there in the marketplace and with all the customers that Simonelli has that coffee shop owners and operators have an understanding of how important grinders are to the coffee making process? We have to differentiate the market. If we go in a specialty coffee shops, um, I believe that people now understand that grinding is a very important process. And uh, you can also see, uh, sometimes I see in a coffee shops, for example, a coffee machine with uh, three mitos grinder, four mitos grinder. So uh, you see that they invest uh, as much as money they do in the coffee machine in the grinder process. So uh, multiple grinders, high quality grinders, uh, different types of grinders. Uh, and this is 
is just only for espresso. Then they have the grinders for brewing. So at the moment, uh, if you go in a specialty coffee shops, uh, probably there is a more investment in terms of money on grinders than on the coffee equipment itself. Uh, if you go in commercial business, uh, still they don't have uh, this knowledge, you know, how important it is. So still is a, is a commercial product and uh, still the money makes a big difference uh, when you go in, in commercial business. Yeah. So we need to educate people and uh, this is, I think, one of the job we have to do. So it makes uh, the uh, specialty coffee business more democratic, enlarge the community as much as possible, create a cross-contamination between the specialty coffee community and the commercial community because uh, quality is not something that should be not only in the specialty coffee shops. Specialty coffee shops, maybe they will have the rarest varieties in the world, they will have the rarest micro lot, but the quality, I think, should be a concept that should go across all the different segments. Great. We expect to see better, more high-quality grinders out there more and more throughout the coffee industry. Lauro, thanks very much for joining us here today on Fifth Wave. Thank you, Laura's final point was excellent and worth reiterating. Quality is a concept that should go across all market segments. Whether you're a big chain or an independent, your grinders cannot be an afterthought. Grinders are critical in delivering an excellent beverage. And in some contexts, you may need to invest as much, if not more, into your coffee grinders than in your espresso machine. And that's all for this week's Fifth Wave podcast. Please subscribe to Fifth Wave wherever you get your podcasts. And if you've enjoyed this show and want to stay informed, visit worldcoffeeportal.com to get access to the latest global coffee news, including weekly coffee dose. Links are in the show notes. This episode was produced in the one and only Serendipity Studios in glorious Camden, North London. It was produced by myself, Jeffrey Young, Hannah Heath, James Harper of Filter Productions, and sound engineering by Chris Bristow. And for this week's song from the Coffee Music Project, there's a beautiful song called She by Carla Silva. And until next time, stay safe and stay caffeinated. She has been my dedication, motivation, inspiration, the mirror, my deepest dreams. She's a very strong woman, the most loving woman that I have ever seen. I want to say I want to say I love you for being there for me while we know. So hitting that I thank you. So hitting that I love you for giving me what's good in life and my rules. Show me that I can fly all my life. She show me that I can cry. It's alright. She should be my dedication, motivation, inspiration, the mirror of my deepest dreams. She's a very strong. When I could see her white chance when my first smile Now she's in a broken chair of the spirits With the elegance we haven't known through love I want to say thank you I want to say that I want to say
I want to say thank you. I want to say I love you.